since NASA's Mariner 4 spacecraft passed Mars in July 1965 and transmitted the first close-up images of our red neighbor planet to Earth, a lot has happened. Over the decades that followed, dozens of other complex instruments were sent to the Martian terrain and surface, where they collected important data, produced detailed images, and put ambitious research projects into action. However, the numerous Mars missions that have been completed in the meantime by no means mean that we have already unlocked all the secrets of our cosmic neighbor. Surprising discoveries are still regularly made on the legendary celestial body, which cannot always be immediately placed in a plausible context. In today's video, we show you which bizarre structure NASA's Curiosity rover recently discovered on the dust-covered surface of the planet, and what other recent Martian discoveries are keeping scientists spellbound. Are you amazed by the exciting research missions and the unique discoveries in the universe? Then don't forget to subscribe to Simply Space for regular updates on these captivating topics. By giving us a thumbs up, you're motivating us and showing that we can keep you engaged with the content of our posts. Enigmatic Structure If we were to take a cursory glance at the images taken by Curiosity without knowing their backgrounds, we might quickly get the idea that they depicted fossilized coral. In truth, however, the fascinating images were not taken at the bottom of a terrestrial sea, but in the middle of the massive Gale Crater. The imposing impact site, which was formed an estimated 3.5 billion years ago and has a diameter of almost 93 miles, has been under close scrutiny by Curiosity since 2012. Given the amazing shape of the flower-like object captured on image, a key question arises, what is it in detail? You could say such structures embody ancient relics of Mars's past, which significantly help researchers trace the evolution of the celestial body on the first hand. Accordingly, the object was formed at a time when the now dust-dry surface of Mars was still graced by accumulations of water and flowing streams. Thus, the exciting structure represents the result of rivers that once meandered across Mars, deforming and solidifying the rock by carrying minerals with them. Thundering Masses of Water the extent to which water masses from the past help shape the face of Mars also becomes clear to us when we take a look at the exciting research investigation whose results were published a few months ago. The fact that Mars once had liquid water is now considered certain by experts. Accordingly, the countless dried up river channels and canyons testify to the fact that the red planet was not always as dry as dust as it appears today. However, the question of how much liquid water actually once existed on our neighboring planet is still the subject of heated debate. Some researchers assume that it was nothing more than temporary rainfall that created temporary streams on the surface. On the other hand, there is the assumption that Mars once could have had steady rivers, lakes, and even full-scale seas. An alternative approach is based on the assumption that it was the meltwater of large glaciers that formed the rivers and bodies of water on Mars. The realizations, which were attained by the expert team around Timothy Gouge of the University of Texas in the context of their investigation, suggest, however, a completely different assumption. These scientists identified some references, which point to the fact that it was in truth mainly roaring torrents that sculpted the landscape picture of the red planet. These acted through water accumulations and craters. The water had accumulated first in the impact site, whereby over the course of time, an immensely large pressure developed, which brought the edges of the crater to burst. The result of these processes were consequently gigantic water masses, which spilled over the surrounding areas like flash floods. Since enormous amounts of stored energy were released during such processes, the erupting floods could have left deep trenches and canyons on the surface within a very short time. In order to understand how often such crater flash floods occurred on Mars and what role they really played in the formation of the river valleys, that are still visible today. The experts focused on those dried up river channels that apparently have their origins at the edge of a crater and also show no connection 
to other former river networks. The researchers succeeded in identifying a total of 262 such structures. The exact analysis of the landscape formations, however, drew a truly surprising picture. The force of the released water accumulations could have been sufficient to have eroded 14 trillion cubic meters of sediment. For classification, this corresponds to nearly 25% of the entire material eroded in Mars River valleys. The enormous Mars Valley carrying the name Ma'adim Vallis also shows the enormous forces acting at that time. Accordingly, this mile deep and 500 mile long cleft was also formed by such a crater flash flood. An indication for life? As is well known, the question of the exact history of the former Martian waters is just one of the most central aspects of planetary explanation. There is also another, no less exciting topic. Was it possible that living beings once existed on our red neighboring planet? As we all know, researchers have not yet been able to provide a clear answer to this highly exciting research question. This makes the unusual Martian sediment samples that Curiosity recovered some time ago all the more fascinating. What puzzled researchers about the discovery in question was the fact that the samples had strikingly low levels of the carbon isotope C13. As a general rule, where living organisms cannot be detected directly, other traces must be tracked down that testify to their former existence. Organic compounds, such as dimethyl sulfate, chloromethane, or theophene, serve as possible evidence that a celestial body once harbored extraterrestrial life. Typically, such molecular compounds are produced by microorganisms on our blue home planet. However, they can also be based on geochemical processes. The situation is quite similar in the case of the recorded Mars methane, the background of which has not yet been revealed. In order to find out whether the corresponding carbon compounds on the red planet have a geological or an organic background, an analysis of the isotope content proves to be particularly promising. We know from our terrestrial organisms that they prefer to incorporate the light carbon isotope C12 into their tissue. Thus, material that has low levels of the carbon isotope C13 compared to the rock and atmosphere is considered potentially organic. To see how the characteristic distribution presents itself on Mars, Curiosity took more than 30 drill samples in the Gale Crater. In order to obtain as comprehensive and broad an image as possible during the exploration, the samples were again taken from different locations and rocks. Subsequently, numerous drill samples were examined in detail and also examined by the rover's laser spectrometer with regard to their isotope contents. The unexpected finding? 10 of the samples examined contain surprisingly little C13 carbon, while the corresponding values in the atmosphere of the celestial body still amount to plus 46 per mil. They were quantified to minus 70 per mil in the analyzed soil samples. If such a result would be recorded on Earth, the researchers would not hesitate to assign an organic background to the recorded values. In the case of Mars, however, the experts are much more cautious because these explanations, which are valid on our terrestrial homeland, might not be transferred seamlessly to the processes of Mars. In order to understand the true background of the conspicuous samples, it must first be clarified whether there could be other natural processes on the red planet that could explain the carbon isotope values. In this connection, three different theses exist in the rows of experts, which are considered at present equally. Possible Explanations By far the most exciting explanation is based on the fact that the recorded values were actually created by Martian microorganisms. Theoretically, it would be conceivable that the microbes were feeding methane into their cells. The biogenic organic compounds that were created in the course of this process consequently remained in the Martian sediment in the form of residues. Such a scenario could also explain why the soil samples, with extremely negative C13 values, also contain reduced sulfur. Thus we know from some terrestrial bacteria that the anaerobic oxidation of methane is often accompanied by the reduction of sulfate. However, non-organic backgrounds are also conceivable. About every 100 million years, our solar system is immersed in a molecular dust cloud. As a result of these cosmic dust showers, an increasing number of particles with an extremely low C13 content flow into the Earth. So, in theory, it would be possible that Mars also came into contact with these interstellar dust particles. The low C13 particles could have then accumulated in the ice of the red planet. This would be consistent with the fact that the surprising isotope values 
come mainly from samples that once graced the surface of the celestial body. Last but not least, there remains the scenario of photochemical reaction of methane and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of the red planet. As a result of the influence of sunlight, the corresponding processes could have initiated an abiotic formation and deposition of organic molecules. In order to reveal the true background of the recorded values, the researchers now need one thing above all, even more meaningful data. This is the only way experts might one day be able to refute or confirm the explanations presented. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the exciting discoveries and research projects on Mars? Write us your thoughts, your suggestions, and your feedback to today's contribution below in the comments. Would you like to see more interesting articles on the topic of outer space? Then take a look at the other videos on our channel, which we have linked for you in the credits. Thanks a lot for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.